we have for today's problem is an RLC circuit. It was driven by a 60 hertz generator that you find in everyday life. And that generator is driven by this equation. The EMF by the generator is 170 volts times cosine 377 times the time and 377 radians per second corresponds to 60 hertz given by omega equals 2 pi f. And then we have an inductor, a resistor, and a capacitor. Inductor is 0.25 henrys, capacitor is 100 microfarads, resistor is 100 ohms. And so the first question is, what is the overall impedance, Z, for this circuit? So we can go ahead and draw our make-believe circuit, add our inductor, our resistor, and then our capacitor, and we can label them 100 microfarads, our inductor is 0.25 henrys, and our resistor is 100 ohms. And then our voltage, 170, cosine 377 times time. And so the first thing we want to do is look at the equations for figuring out what the overall impedance happens to be. So our impedance equation is Z is going to be equal to R squared plus XL minus XC squared. So now we have to come up with these values. So what do we get for XL? XL is just given by omega times the inductance. So in this case here, it's 377 times 0.25. And so the net result, um, that value is 94.25. And then what is XC? We can look at the capacitive reactance of our capacitor. And that's given by 1 over omega times C. So that's just simply 1 over 377 radians per second times 100 microfarads. And so when we go ahead and run that calculation out, we get a value of 26.52. So what we want for finding out the overall impedance is to take XL minus XC. So we have that set up already. And so when we go ahead and do that, we get a value of 67.73. So that's what we need to plug into this part over here. So we're going to take 67.73 and square that. Then add that to 100 squared, and we'll end up with a value for z. And I'll just go ahead and write the z value then over here. And so z turns out to be, I think, 120. And let me check my notes for that. 120.8 ohms. OK, so that's our first step. Next question is, when will vr, the voltage on the resistor, be equal to 0 for the first time? So by looking at our equation driving our circuit, we can see that at time zero, when we take 377 times zero, we get zero, of course. Cosine of zero is one. So we start off with the generator at its maximum voltage. An unlikely scenario in real life, but we're going to do that kind of a problem just to show you how to operate with cosine instead of the normal sine uh, equation. So what's the first step? We have to go ahead and we have to draw our phasor diagram. And so I'll go ahead and start off with a simple one first. And so it's always easy to start with just having your phasor diagram in this sort of orientation. And then add the voltage of the generator to that. So I like to use colors for my drawings. And so I like to make the inductor blue. And so I'll go ahead and draw the value for XL times I max. And so XL, we go ahead and see that we had 94.25. So this value is 92.45 times the maximum current. And so we go ahead and make this our blue vector. And then we look and see what we're going to have for our capacitor. And the capacitor is always in the down direction, and we look and we have a value of 26, so that's going to be a fraction of what this one happens to be, so that's probably about the right rough size for our capacitor's reactance, so this is going to be XC times I 
And so in this case, it will be our value of uh, 26.52 times I. And then finally, we have to draw our resistor circuit in here. And so our resistor component is one that goes along the x-axis initially anyway. And so that's going to be something that we said that was 100, so it should be slightly larger than the blue. And so that's what our diagram looks like for just the inductor, resistor, and capacitor components. And then we have to come up with the total EMF. And so the total EMF, or what's being driven by this whole circuit, happens to be our generator. And so the generator takes this voltage and this voltage, adds them together. And since red and blue are purple, I like to go ahead and just draw purple to be the result of XL plus XC. And so in this case, because XC is negative, then we end up getting with a, a shorter vector than we had over there. And so that's what our voltage uh, looks like when we take these two vectors, add them together, and then our final vector is just the combination of all three vectors, and that ends up being the vector that we use to represent the voltage coming from our generator. And so we have that set up, and so now we need to know what this angle happens to be, and we can finish our diagram. But what's happening in this case is we're saying that it's starting off with the EMF, and so here's our EMF from our generator, is at zero based on our equation for with using cosine. So we should really redraw this whole diagram to kind of show you what's happening in reality. And so what we're going to do is we're going to start off with the EMF vector pointing straight up because that tells us we have our maximum voltage from our generator when we're starting this. And then we have to finish off with our inductor and capacitor and they have to be 180 degrees out of phase and then I go ahead and add my final resistor in here that has to be 90 degrees to the capacitor and the inductor and so then that gives us our net result for our diagram it's not exactly a reproduction of what I had before but I'm at an angle so it's a little bit awkward so again, what we're looking for is this angle between the resistor and the generator. And we can go ahead and calculate that. So we're set up now with the proper representation based on the given initial condi conditions. And so now what we're asking is when is the resistor voltage going to be zero for the first time? So this is our resistor voltage. So we have to wait for this thing to rotate. And when it gets all the way over to here, that's going to tell us when it's going to be zero for the very first time. So what's important for answering this question is we have to have that phase angle. And so we have to have an equation that, that figures out what the phase is going to be. And so we know that tangent or phase angle is going to be given by our XL minus XC. And I'll use the negative sign this time for the normal convention. And dividing that by R. So when we go ahead and plug in for this, we get our 95 minus our uh, 26.5. Oops, this is going to be 92. And we're going to divide that by 100. All right, so then we solve for the phase angle. We just say that's 10 to the negative 1 of 92. And I'll add a couple more digits in here, 4, 5 minus 26.52 and divide that by 100. And so when we solve for that, we end up getting an angle and I'll have to check my notes again. And so that phase angle ends up being 34.1 degrees. All right, so we can label that in here if we want, 34.1. And it's also 34.1 in here. And so now I have to figure out how long it's going to take for this thing to rotate through. And so we go ahead and we say, well, we've got 90 degrees uh, for this part of this angle plus the 34.1. So we find out that theta that has to be traveled for this to reach zero for the first time is going to be 90 plus 34.1. So we end up adding that together, 124.1.
and that's going to be our theta. And then how do we figure out how much time it's going to take? Because we know that theta is going to be equal to omega times t, and we know that that's going to be given by 377 times our time. And since we already know what theta happens to be, that's 124.1. So we solve and say that the time then is going to be given by 124.1 divided by 377, and we can solve for that, but it's not going to work because why? This is happens to be in degrees, and omega is in radians per second, so we have to go ahead and convert that uh, degrees into a radians. So the way we do that is we multiply it by 2 pi over 360 degrees. And so when we solve for that, I don't have that number actually calculated out, but you just have to punch in the numbers and you'll get the correct value for that. And so that will tell us when the voltage from the resistor for the first time will rotate and be along the negative x-axis. And then we can ask, what is the energy that's going to be stored by the inductor and the capacitor? And so if we look at our equations for energy for an inductor, UL, is going to be equal to one-half L I squared, and the energy stored by a capacitor is one half C V squared, and the maximum value then would be whenever we have maximum voltage, and whenever we have maximum current, because inductance and capacitance are constants. So how do we figure out the max current? Well, the max current is given by I max is equal to EMF divided by Z, or V equals IR. And so we have to go ahead and plug in our voltage of 170 volts and divide that by our Z value that we had earlier. And so our Z value is 120.8. And so when we go ahead and calculate that out, I think we get something like 1.41 amps. And I'll check that just to make sure. And yes, 1.41 amps. So then we can go ahead and plug 1.41, making sure to square it, multiplying it by the inductance L. And so our inductance is 90. Um, sorry, our inductance is 0.25. And we can solve for UL. And when you go and run those numbers all the way through, uh, I think we get a value of 1 quarter joule or 0 0.25 joules. And then what do we get for this version? Well, we have to figure out what the Vmax happens to be across the inductor. And so what is Vmax? Vmax on the inductor is going to be given by Imax times XL. Okay? And so what do I got to plug in? My Imax value, again, which we had up here, 1.41 amps and multiplied by our XL value. So we go over here for our XL, and we had XL uh, is 92.45. And when you go ahead and run that all the way through and do that calculation, uh, for that voltage we end up getting 37.4 volts. something is wrong here, so I have to go ahead and look at that. And I should have done capacitance instead of inductance, so I'll Vmax on the capacitor, because I'm looking for a capacitor. And so what is the Vmax for the capacitor? Vmax is going to be the Imax again times our XC, and so we end up doing 1.41 times our value for XC, which is 26.52, and when we go ahead and solve for that, we get our value of 37.4 volts. So we take that, plug that into Vmax value, making sure to square that, and then multiplying it by 100 microfarads, 
and then we end up getting a 0 0.070 amount of joules for the inductor or for the capacitor's stored energy. So we can see that the inductor has about three and a half times more energy stored than the capacitor has in this scenario for this circuit. Now if we were to speed it up or slow it down, these values would change a little bit, but for the standard uh, frequency of 60 hertz and 170 volts coming from a generator, these are the values we would get for these types of components if we put them into an RLC configuration. And that's it for this problem.